Yeah, I knew it. I'm getting mail saying that you don't like how I dissed Robin yesterday. The, the uh, second half of the Batman-Robin crime-fighting duo, I said he was dispensable. I said he didn't add much except get in trouble that Batman had to get him out of. So now I'm having to retract and say that I do admire how Robin used to dramatize everything. I mean, Batman was so cool. And he was just so, he so offhandedly vanquished his enemies that you needed a little kid that got real excited and let you know when things were exciting. Like, holy devastation, Batman. Yeah. Holy powder donut, Batman. Robin said the holy, holy and everything. Like, he was a very spiritual guy. And like, holy pre-exile prophets, Batman. Yeah, there he is. So we got to give it to him for that. He dramatized everything like a little girl. Robin was like a little girl in his tights. And uh, he was squeaky voices. Uh... His, um, his testosterone hadn't kicked in yet. <laughs> Otherwise, um, he would have uh, competed with Batman for Catwoman. But Batman had no competition there. And Catwoman almost gave up her life of crime to be with Batman. But in the end, she could not, she could not turn away from the riches of this Kurenion. Catwoman was the Demas of her day. She fell in love with the Kurenion. She could have had Batman, but no. Demas could have had Paul, but no. He fell in love with the Kurenion. So did Catwoman. In that one episode, she had that big bag of jewels and gold. She just couldn't drop it. And she fell to her death. What a great scriptural lesson there. You can't take it with you. So we're going to talk about now the post-exile prophets. Who are these strange individuals? You know, I feel sorry for these guys. If, if you were to ask me, Martin, if you had the choice of being a pre-exile prophet or a post-exile prophet, what would you rather be? I'd rather be the pre-exile prophet because sometimes ignorance is bliss. I'm not sure if I really mean this or not. I have to think about it some more. But for now, I would have to say that I would love the happy thought that when Messiah comes the first time, suffers a little bit, goes to the cross, yeah, it's terrible, wakes up and destroys Rome and we're into the kingdom. Yeah, that's what I would like. Um, the post-exile prophets had a terrible job because their revelation was terrible. I'm going to tell you what that was. Who are these strange people? Well, they're really exile and post-exile prophets. I'm going to include the exile prophets here. We're talking about Ezekiel. Ezekiel had something special. I'm going to hold on to that till tomorrow. Talking about Ezekiel, Daniel, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. All right. You got to pity these people. Because when it comes to them, you remember the events earlier where the pre-exile prophets saw one coming of Christ? And some people today still, you know, can't get that straight. These guys, now they saw two advents clearly. Clearly now, he's going to come twice. And it's like they're, they're coming up on the mountain. And that analogy I gave you yesterday, well, when you come up on the mountain, you realize... That, oh, cripe, you know, you think that you're going to get to that mountain and then you're going to be right next to the other one. Uh, you get to the first mountain and you look over and there's like this huge valley and you go, oh, crap. There, there, there's another, that mountain that we saw a thousand miles back, it's actually hundreds of miles away. Now we see it, we're getting closer to it. So now God is giving a sharper telescope. He's piercing farther into time and showing these men more showing israel more because frankly this is what i think i think god's merciful i don't think they can handle this all at once they can't handle the truth this is like uh jack nicholson told tom cruise you can't handle the truth right this is what god said to the pre-exile prophets they said god give us more give us more he said you can't handle the truth i'm not going to give it to you I'm going to give it to Daniel. I'm going to give it to Ezekiel. And you don't want to be these guys because Daniel is like crying all the time, right? It's like um, Elvis' song, Hound Dog. He's crying all the time because he's he wants his ardent uh, hope, expectation is to come into the kingdom. I'm telling you, every single Israelite, all these prophets, that's all they wanted. And anytime they got information that said it was going to be hundreds of years off, they're like, oh, oh, jeez. I mean, you, just, you can just feel them. They're just, ah, oh, you got to be kidding me. Like they think it's going to be close. And then uh, they find out that like you get to that mountain and you think you're just going to hop over to the other one in a day. Yeah, oh, God, there's 300 miles between these mountains. Jeez. 
And now, not only that, but there's two captivities instead of one. The Babylonian captivity was bad enough. The Assyrian captivity was bad enough. Now they're finding out that there's going to be a second dispersion. They're going to be destroyed again. And there's and Messiah is going to be cut off. And there's going to be another period of desolation. And Israel is going to repudiate Messiah himself. Can you believe? No wonder this really helps you understand why they were false prophets in that day. People don't want to hear this. So a lot of false prophets rose up. What did, what did Daniel tell you? Uh, he's good. No, don't worry. Don't worry. You know, and they prophesied good and they prophesied falsehoods that appeased the people. There were ear ticklers in that day, too. We have them in our era. Those who tickled the hearing and um, and they tell you things you want to hear rather than thus saith the Lord. And this is tough, tough stuff to see that, oh, geez, it's not going to come right away. Um, so I see why the false prophets rose up, and I feel sorry for the post-exile prophets. I would not want to be a post-exile prophet. I have my bunker light here. And um, so now I want you to know this. Israel is still getting glory. You see, that's still the expectation and ardent hope of all these people. It's just that it's going to be delayed. Uh, and it keeps being de delayed and delayed. So instead of two periods, like remember I told you the pre-exile prophets, very clean. There were pre-Messianic times. There was an advent of Christ. He died, he rose, he kicked ass. Then there was the Messianic kingdom, simple. Now, however, we see a different map. Now we see pre-Messianic times, right, of course. Then we see the first advent, and then that's going to wrap up poorly. Uh, then there's going to be another dispersion, and they knew all about dispersions because they were dispersed in, Bab in Babylon and in Assyria. There's going to be a second advent, then the Messianic kingdom. But it's going to be after a theologically measured, I mean theologically, it's going to be after a chronologically measured time period. It's probably theological too. There's going to be time. And now, see, that's when Daniel comes in and he starts giving the times. So the first thing an Israelite wants to know is, okay, how long? How long? When you find out that there's going to be a wide gap between the coming and humiliation, the, and the death and the coming in glory, the first thing you want to know is how long. That's why Daniel gets the prophecy of the 490 years. And we're going to talk about that next week. So Messiah, we get these disturbing reports. The Messiah is going to be cut off. This is Daniel. And there is nothing for him. No kingdom. No kingdom. As predicted by the pre-exile prophets. No kingdom. They, they, they predicted it, the pre-exile prophets, did, and they were correct. There is going to be a kingdom, but it's not going to happen at his first appearing. In fact, there's going to be no kingdom, no crown, no throne. Hey, what's the word today, Daniel? Uh, I got three words for you. Okay, what is it? No kingdom, no crown, no throne. And uh, at that time, he probably broke open a beer. He said, here, drink this. It'll help until the times. And Daniel desperately wants to know how long it's going to be. And he's given a revelation. This is great. We're going to talk about it next week. Um, so the post-exile prophets tell Israel now that um, Messiah is going to be rooted out by a violent death and Israel is going to be dispersed and their city is going to be raised to the ground again yeah again because they don't learn the lesson they don't learn the lesson do they they do not learn the lesson they and this is the whole key with Israel remember I told you on Monday that their history as they progress towards this kingdom it's just interspersed with so many disasters disaster recovery disaster recovery apostasy disaster recovery light good king bad king uh, life death but it's all going toward one goal at the end of a decreed measure of time of desolations, the Messiah is going to come out. He's going to come out of what? Of concealment. But he's going to appear to an Israel that has been broken in pieces, desolated, and crushed. Broken in pieces, desolated, and crushed. That's the condition Israel is going to be in at the end of this eon. That has been prophesied by the post-exile prophets. 
Messiah has been concealed. So get this straight. At his first coming, he's rejected by the very people looking for him. And he rejects them too. And at his first appearance, to quote Daniel, there is nothing for him. Well, you know, for the most part. He does snag himself 12 guys who are going to run the world with him in the coming kingdom. And in that com coming kingdom, everything is going to be for him. Same with Israel as a nation. Now they have nothing. Then they are going to have everything. This is the picture mainly Daniel gives us and the other prophets associated with the post-exile. Two advents, two ends, three periods instead of the one. But always, always, always looking forward to the glory, the glory that all of Israel expected.